The world is busy chasing after the things of the world. But you know, God says that at the end of your days, every single human being has to stand before Him. Every human being will have to give an account to God. For He's appointed for once to die and then face the judgment. That's what this is all about. It's all about destroying all the things that are destroying the garden of God with our lives. It's all about being conformed to God. God wants us to be conformed to His image, to His ways. And what is the image of God? Well, the Bible says that we were created in the image of God. What is the greatest image of God in this world? On earth. Well, the greatest image of God is Jesus Christ. He represents the greatest image. He is the, he is the very image of the invisible God. The sinless one. The greatest legacy in the history of creation. The, the wisest human being. The greatest pioneer. The greatest act of love. The greatest miracle. The spirit of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is the number one greatest human being ever existed in the history of creation. That is the image that we are to emulate because he is the greatest image. And we're all born in the image of God, as the scriptures say. But Jesus Christ is the greatest image ever in the history of creation. We need to surrender to him because God is the power. God is the sovereign totalitarian ruler. Yep. God bless you today. Remember, repent your sins. Seek God. Pour your souls out to the Creator. Take communion with the Creator. And don't do it today. We're in an emergency. It is an emergency. We break all the strongholds of Satan. We destroy the strongholds of deception. We destroy the grave. We destroy death. We say no to death. We say yes to life. We say no to the devil, Lucifer. We say yes to Jesus Christ. We say yes to the mountain of life. We say no to the mountain of death. We say no to the things that hurt people. We say yes to things that bless people. We are pro-life. We're not pro-death. And my friends, it's time to understand the difference and it's time to take some evasive actions in our lives and to seek life the mountain of life and to practice that with the Creator God and to make that acknowledgement with God for our own personal lives. It has to start with us. And that's how we are able to be His light throughout the world. That's how the world sees changes. God says, I've been warning you, rising up early in the morning, sending you my people to tell you to turn from your ways, but you're not obeying my voice. He says, if you're not going to obey my voice, you're going to have to worship these gods. You're going to have to be led by false gods. God continuously warns people all the time. He warns people. It's not his fault for the disasters. It's not his fault for all the wars. He says to turn and turn and turn from your ways. But you have no pleasure in death of anybody. And you want to be blessed? You want to be blessed? You have holes in your pockets right now. You want to be blessed? Invoke Him in your life. Invoke God. That's how the world gets blessed. But when you kick God out of society, who's going to come in? The devil's going to come in. Lucifer's going to come in. Only God is going to be able to get us out of this mess. You know, only God can raise us out of the dead. You see? Without God, we're going to just stay dead. You see, He says, I kill. I kill. He says, God kills. And I make alive. I murder. And I bring up from the dead again. God's loud. So who's going to shake their fists at God? The devil. The devil's going to get humanity to shake their fists at the love of God. The devil is going to get humanity to shake his fists at the greatest act of love in the history of creation. That's what the devil's going to do. They're going to say, yeah, you know, you're going to shake their fists. That's the devil. That's the devil. That's not God. Right? That's not God. That's the devil. And you know, there's no lying allowed in heaven. There's no killing allowed in heaven. Right? There's no deception allowed in heaven. Right? In heaven, it's a greater, higher level of standards of social well-being. Fear, fear him who kills both the flesh and the soul in hell. Fear him. That's who we are to fear. You know, the world is dying. Right? The flesh is being attacked and being persecuted. Poison water, poison food. 
all this electrification, frequency wave warfare, all this type of warfare that's going on, the human body, all this pharmacia going on. Like, don't be afraid of anything of this world, God says. He will give us strength, He will give us power, and He'll call us in due time. But where are we going to end up is what the most important thing is. The thing is that God wants us to go from life to life. God does not want us to die. And He says if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you believe in the resurrection, and you receive baptism, He says you will never die. Everybody is included. There is no one specific and particular. Whoever, the number is unlimited. The number of God is unlimited. Anybody, whosoever, anybody. Doesn't matter what you did yesterday. Doesn't matter what your thoughts were today. Today, if you hear his voice, he says, do not harden your hearts. Receive the love of God. Because love is the answer. The, the real love of God. The love of God, my friends, that loves not only cares for our own, but for others. That's the real love of God. You know, God says, this is eternal life. It's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's eternal life. Do it properly. Do it with the Holy Spirit. Do it with God. Because without God, we cannot love properly. Well, God, you know, there's two different loves. There's two different mountains. Well, God, where we can love, but it's not genuine in all aspects. It's not complete love. God says that you're not just to love your own, but you're to love those of your enemies. You're to love those who persecute you. Right? Bless those who curse you. That's the real love of God. It's impossible for humanity to do it. The only way we can do it is with God helping us. And He knows that, and that's why God is involved. He has to be. He has to be involved. He knows that he has to be involved. Because we do not have transcendency in our own lives. We cannot raise ourselves from the dead. We cannot glorify ourselves. God knows that. And so we need, he knows that we need him. He's there. We have to reach out to God with our free will. We have to surrender our lives, flesh, soul, and spirit, and pour ourselves out to Almighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ, and he says, all who believe in me will never die. You'll go from life to life. That's what the resurrection is all about. That's what the cross of Christ is all about. That is the portal, the eternal life, the heart of God. It's the heart of God. That's there. You're stuck in there with both feet. And you go into heaven with God. That's the portal of everlasting life. That's the heart of God. It is the conscience of God. It is everlasting life. Pray God, and God is going to give you eternal life. He'll bless you. Not the works and the faith of delusion, but the works and the faith of the true living God dwelling within. And that's what God has for everybody who loves Him, for everybody who reaches out with their hearts, their spirits, their conscience, up to the throne of God, according to the patriotism of God, according to the kingdom of God. And God will bless you. And God will show you his kingdom. And God will wrap his arms around you and bring you into his bosom. And he'll manifest himself to you. God says to take communion with God. You yourself and thoughts and read your Proverbs every day. One proverb a day, 31 Proverbs. Vitamins for your spirit and therapy for your soul, and there you'll be healed, and there he says, I'll manifest myself to them. It is an emergency. We break all the strongholds of Satan. We destroy the strongholds of deception. We destroy the grave. We destroy death. We say no to death. We say yes to life. We say no to the devil, Lucifer. We say yes to Jesus Christ. We say yes to the mountain of life. We say no to the mountain of death. We say no to the things that hurt people. We say yes to things that bless people. We are pro-life. We're not pro-death. And my friends, it's time to understand the difference, and it's time to take some evasive actions in our lives and to seek life, the mountain of life, and to practice that with the Creator God and to make that acknowledgement with God for our own personal lives. It has to start with us. 
And that's how we are able to be his light throughout the world. That's how the world sees changes. You gotta hear this for yourselves and seek God in, multi in, in solitude with him. Just you and God. You and God. And that's it. Nobody else. With your heart to God. Taking communion with God. Reading the scriptures. Imploring God. Speaking to God. Having the door open so that you can walk in with God. And then you can hold his hand. He'll hold your hand. And he'll lead you to abundant living waters. He'll lead you to eternal life. Oh, that's what you need. That is more than we can ever imagine the goodness of God. Who can ever have the mind to completely understand the amazing, amazing attributes of Almighty God? You know, the Father has billions of different realms. Billions of different realms. How many people are there in this world? There's like over 7 billion people. If every person had a testimony, it would be different and unique. At the exact same time, God would manifest himself to them. Think of all the different realms that the Father has for those who love him. All those who are glorified. Think of the thereafter that God has for us. The Bible says that eyes have never seen, the mind has never thought, or could imagine the things that God has waiting for those who love him. That's what's waiting for us. This life is chaff, my friends. This life is nothing compared to what God has waiting. This is the life where we destroy death. This is the life where we make our allegiance to God. This is the life where we step into the covenant with God. This is the life where we completely destroy the works of Lucifer, Satan, the devil. This is the life where the creation gets to glorify God in an amazing way. In a way where we're worshiping with him in spirit and in truth without even seeing him. The power of God and doing all these wonderful works and preserving us for everlasting life. There's a purpose for humanity. And God is doing multiple tasks today. First of all, he's gonna he wants you blessed. That's the most important thing on the menu. God wants you to be blessed. That's the, one, the most important thing. His number one priority is to bless humanity. He wants to bless all of you. But you have to say yes. Yes to the blessings of God. Yes to the cross. What I'm asking is will you surrender your free will to Almighty God and receive the blessing? That's it. Because that's what we need. It's more important than anything else that we have in this world. A blessing from God is more important than your house, it's more important than your car, it's more important than your job, because a blessing from God is eternal life after this life is done. Not that he wants to take that away from you, not that I would want him to take that away from you, but a blessing from God, my friends, that is just an example, is the most important thing in your life. You need to get blessed. You need to say yes to the love of the cross of Christ. The real true Christ. The one who rose from the dead. And he wants us all in the same place. We're all belonging in the same place. Jesus Christ blessed everybody. He blessed brown people, red people, yellow people, white people, black people. He blessed everybody, all nations. We're all children of God. There's one kingdom. There's one God. We all end up in the same place. What is all this division? What is it all this hatred? It's not to exist. God's going to wipe it out. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you, little girl. <laughs> wow. Wow, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Wow, I feel the Holy Spirit. Now, this is eternal life. Eternal life, my friends. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, people are getting blessed. You know, people are getting blessed. That's right. You got to remember God. Yeah, you're okay. You say, yes to God. Yes to God. You got saved. God blesses them. Hallelujah. That's good. That's life. That's life. That's living. That's real living, you know. And it's not, you know, God sent me here for your benefit. You know, but I get to share some of the first fruits here, you know. I get to share myself. I get to be able to rejoice too, you know, doing the work of Almighty God. He ordained me here. I say yes to God. I love God. I want God to be glorified. I want him to be filled with joy. It's one of the things I told him when I was born again the first time. You know, when I came to life, I said, Lord God, you have so many things to be upset about. I want you to be, I want to be the one that brings you joy. 
I want to be the one that makes you really filled with joy. You know? And I said, I asked him, don't ever leave me again. Don't ever leave me again. <laughs> you know, and, and, and this is the life. This is the purpose. And God has a purpose for every single person here. All in different capacities. All in different ways. God has a purpose for everybody. The Lord is cast under the lap. The decision is holy from the Lord. Ask God what your purpose is. And he'll give you your purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask God your purpose. And he'll give you your purpose. Just ask God. Ask him for good things. Pour your heart to God. Get real with God. Be true to God. And God will be true to you. God will bless you. Doesn't matter what religion you're in. Doesn't matter the color of your skin. Doesn't matter what you did yesterday or today. Now is the time. Now is the time because God is merciful, you see. God is merciful. Mercy, you see. Real true mercy. You know, people say God is merciful and then they go killing people because they don't believe the way they believe. That's not mercy. Let them live a full life. Maybe they'll be able to, you know, get to God. Uh, don't kill them right away. You kill them right away. I mean, they, they don't have no more of a chance to get to know God. That's not mercy. You know, it's, don't be deceived by the devil. Don't be deceived by the tongue of the serpent. Don't listen to that rhetoric. Understand the true love of God. The true mercy of God. There's two mountains. There is two truths. There's two routes. One is artificial. One is an imitator. An opposing opposition against the true one. You know, if you want to understand what the counterfeit is, you got to know the original. That's how you get to know things. Deductive reasoning. Without the original, you can't really understand. You won't understand uh, the one that's flawed. You see? The duplicate. The counterfeit. And the real way is to receive this baptism of Jesus Christ. That's the real true mountain of understanding. That's the real true way. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ, everybody. Give him glory. Glory to Jesus. Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you for blessing me today, oh God. Thank you. Ask God. Ask God. God is waiting to hear from you. Don't harden your heart. You got to smile. 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 Joy. Thank you, God. Thank you for putting me in this place of torment. I worship you. Now, get me out of here. <laughs> and he will. He will. He will. You know, God cares for you. God wants to, God wants to bless you. you know, ask him for blessings. And he'll do it. That's all it is. There's no reason to be angry. Don't listen to the devil. Don't listen to Lucifer. Because Lucifer only wants to make you sad. Lucifer wants to make you angry. You know that Lucifer has the world shaking their fists at the cross of Christ. The greatest act of love in the history of creation. Can you imagine that? That's why he has people. Don't, don't listen to the devil. Don't listen to the devil. Listen to Jesus. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So people, they ask, they say, who is this crazy guy? This guy's crazy. Well, you know, Christ crazy. For sure. Absolutely. It's the joy of the Lord, my friends. The joy of the Lord. An example that you will see the joy of the Lord. It will spark, spark some, some life, you know, in your body. To understand when the scriptures say, Oh, come and taste that the Lord is good. Cast all your cares upon him because he loves you. He cares for you. Give it all to God. Seek him diligently with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And God will bless you. He will make himself known to you. He will manifest himself to you. Once you taste that God, manifest himself to you. Once God makes himself known to you, my friends, you'll never have enough. It will it'll change your life. Holy eternities. You'll never forget it. It is a testimony. You'll never forget that. When God touches you, 
It is a life-changing, altering experience. You've never tasted, you've never felt, experienced anything like that before. And you'll always want to do it again. And it is an alteration because when God touches you, it means he's, he's revealing himself to you. It's the character of God. He wants you to know who he is. You see? And that's, that's the, the amazing transfer and the amazing touch of God when you actually get to, get to communicate and see him, you know, for who he is. At whatever amount he decides he wants to reveal himself. And when you get that experience, it, it doesn't mean, you'll, you'll never, never, ever, ever, it's nothing that you can experience here on earth. I've had that experience. It's unconditional belonging. Unconditional belonging. Gosh, oh my, how do you explain it all? How can we explain it? Seek God and find out, my friends. Find out for yourselves. You know, I can, I can give you all these experiences. I can talk to you regarding God. I can instruct you. I can give you all of this information. But you know, let God take this information and let God reveal, uh, reveal out to you. Let God show you what these things mean. Ask Him. Just implore Him in your life. Seek Him. Seek Him. Seek His provisions. You know, the provisions of God is eternal life. You know, God said that the waters that I give you, you'll never thirst again. The waters that I give you will well up inside of you, and out from your mouth will flow rivers of, rivers of life-giving water. The streams of God, the Spirit of God. Water is the Spirit of God. These are spiritual streams. And these are communications from God. They're blessings from God. They come right from His throne room. And these are the river of life that flows from His throne room. God is a life giver. God is not a killer. I mean, he, God kills, He makes alive, but He's the only one who's allowed to do it because He does it properly. But it, all the world has been given a death sentence because of sin. But God is going to wipe it out. There's no death in the kingdom of God. The physical flesh dies. But the soul does not die. The soul lives on. And God says that you will go from life to life. God says to trust in Jesus Christ. Put all your trust in Him. Receive the Spirit of God. He says, all who believe in me will never die, He says. All who believe in me, I will raise them up at the last day and they will be with me. The soul will not die. The soul does not die, my friends. God says, don't be afraid. Come to me. I will bless you. I will bless you. Come out of death. Come out of death. Seek God with all your heart, mind, and strength. Well, friends, this is eternal life, Jesus said. Eternal life is to know the Father and Jesus Christ whom he sent. That is eternal life. It is to know God. God says that you can know him. God says that's eternal life. It's to know him, understand him. You see, Jesus Christ, he opened up the portal of everlasting life. He is the example for all humanity, and he is the, the gatekeeper of the kingdom. Because of his life, he received a great glorification. And he holds the keys of eternal life. And he is our refining fire. He's our refiner. He's our high priest. He is our master pastor. He communicates with us. He prepares us for eternal life. We walk with him the same way the disciples walk with him, only spiritually. You see, Jesus Christ is invisible. The Spirit of God is invisible. And his way he's keeping us honest. He's keeping us in having faith with him. You see, that's the bondage. That is the, the covenant because of the richness of the information that God has for humanity. He only gives it to certain people. He doesn't give it to everybody. And that's why God is invisible right now. That's why God is spirit amongst us and not physical. You see, God is choosing. God wants his first fruits. Are you going to be blessed of God? You wanna, are you going to receive a blessing of God? God will bless you. It doesn't matter who you are. 
Today's the day to receive that blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ.